How's it going everyone? This is Cloud Chief, and in today's video, I wanted to go over some different ways that are pretty good for obtaining gill. Before I jump into different ways to go about making gill, I do want to quickly mention about murking, because I'm sure I'm going to get comments on that. I am not going to go into discussing murking at all, for multiple reasons. One, if you are on like a dead server, it's not going to be something easy to do. And two, it starts to get in a gray area in terms of moral and ethics, in terms of game progression, at least how I feel. You're welcome to have your own opinion about the matter. So I'm not going to be discussing murking in any degree in this video. And so without delaying any further, let's actually jump in and go over the many different ways that it's pretty good to go ahead and make some gill. First thing I want to mention is Ambuscade. You should be doing Ambuscade if at all possible because there are so many different rewards for it. And while you can actually make decent money from Ambuscade, you're also getting other things. You're getting, you know, your armor drops. You can potentially get weapons and just there's a lot of different things you can get from Ambuscade. I definitely think when you're first progressing or even you know for the month I recommend you more focus on getting stuff that you're going to get benefit out of before you're worrying about selling stuff make that secondary objective however it's very easy to make a lot of money from ambuscade like for example I am currently collecting heavy metal plates and rift cinder for my all mace so I'm doing Ambuscade, I make sure I get all the heavy metal plates, the Rift Cinder, and I'm getting the Rift Dross, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell the Rift Dross and then turn around and buy Rift Cinder. So that way, that'll help me complete All Mace. Once I've gotten all those rewards for the month, I then will start collecting Alexandrite being the first thing I would collect to turn around and sell money. And you can get close to, at least on Azura, 10 mil for all the Alex you can get just out of Hallmarks, not even talking Gallantry. Obviously, how much money you get is going to depend on what the prices are for items on your server. But the fact that you can get, you know, a decent amount of ultimate weapon materials that are required to make ultimate weapons, it's a decent way to get gill. And I highly recommend that everyone be doing it. But I would, of course, make sure you're focusing on the stuff that's going to you're going to use to upgrade and progress yourself before you're starting to worry about and use it to make money. The next thing that I want to talk about is Sparks. Sparks is currency that you get from doing objectives out of Records of Eminence. We should all be aware of this, but for anyone who is not aware, you can turn around and buy items from Sparks and then NPC them for a decent amount of gill. If you actually go down the list to equipment level 71 to 98, go to the third page and the second item from the bottom, it should be the Ekaron shield. This actually, from all the testing that I've done, NPCs for the most amount of money for the least amount of sparks. If you do not have maxed fame, there's a chance it might be slightly less than a 10 to 1 ratio for gill, whereas if you have max fame, it is actually more than a 10 to 1 ratio. So if you are max sparks and you turn around and buy all the shields and NPC them, that is over 1 million gill as long as you are max fame. So you definitely want to be making sure you're turning in your excess sparks for shield to turn around and sell for gill. The best thing about it is that it is instantaneous money. You don't have to wait for anything to sell on the auction house or sell to your bazaar. You instantly have this gill as soon as you turn around and sell the shields. So you should always be utilizing this whenever you have extra sparks because it's just very easy money. So the next thing that I want to talk about is Unity Accolades. And there's actually a bunch of different ways you can use these to make gill. If you are a new and returning player and you're not very well geared, you can actually go and fight the level 75 Unity NMs. And they should be an utter pushover as long as you are level 99. Now for any Unity NM that you are popping, you are actually using up Unity Accolades. However, you actually get sparks. And the other interesting thing is you get the most uni accolades to sparks conversion from the level 75 and the conversion actually gets worse the higher you go, which I find kind of odd. But regardless, 
you actually can get, you know, sparks from just popping Unity Accolades and then turn around and be selling the stuff that you get out of coffers. Mostly, you're going to be best off NPCing that stuff. However, out of the coffers, you can actually get uh, Pluton, Betsu, and Riftborn boulders. And that you should either bazaar or sell in the auction house because that actually sells for a decent amount of money. So not only are you converting your Unity Accolades into Sparks, which is instant money, you are also getting things out of the coffers, which can be quite valuable. Not to mention, there is a select number of NMs where the items from that NM are actually used to pop other NMs in the Escha and Ryzen Jima zones. And those actually sell for a decent amount of money. Like the Centurio's Armor on my server currently sells for 500k a stack. So you could very easily go out with capped Unity Accolades, having no sparks, and I could just sit there in theory and keep popping Centurio over and over and over until I've burned all my Accolades. Then I'm going to have a bunch of sparks that I can go ahead and burn for immediate gill. I can pop all the coffers and have a decent chance of getting a decent amount of either Plutons, Riftborn Boulders, and Betsu. Plus, I'm going to be sure getting a ton of Centurio's armor, which I could then turn around and sell on the auction house or bazaar for for a decent amount of money. So Unity NMs at this point are a decent source of gil. However, be aware that some of these higher tier Unity NMs can be a challenge solo, but they are definitely doable solo. But you do want to be more of a well-geared player, have a decent number of job points, and be somewhat experienced to be able to take them down without too much difficulty. And let's go ahead and say that, you know, popping Unity NMs, that takes too much time and you're not even really, you know, interested in spending that much time just spamming out an NM. You can still turn your Unity Accolades in for SP keys or Goblin keys, which you can use to open the Goblin chest. And you have just a random chance of getting items, and I've gotten items worth more than 8 mil out of the Goblin chest. Now, granted, I might be popping... 50 keys before I'm getting, you know, like a 2 mil item and like a 3 mil item here or there. But I mean, if you're popping enough keys and you're getting into high double digits worth of keys, you are going to make some gill turning in those keys. It's going to be probably at least a mil if you're turning in at least 20 keys, I'd say, on average. At least that's my experience with it. Also, with Unity Accolades, if you're not inclined to do the keys, although I think you should be if you're not spending them on anything else, as long as you've cleared the Unity NM at least once, you can buy the items directly for 10k Accolades for one piece. So, I could, on my server, go and spend 50,000 Unity Accolades, and now I have 5 Centurio Armors that I can turn around and sell for 500k. I don't really recommend this. I think you're going to be better off with keys or spending your accolades to pop. But this is still another option to do if you kind of want to be lazy and you want to make sure you're having a direct correlation and guaranteed gill for your points you're converting. So Unity Accolades give a lot of different options for ways of making gill, but you should definitely be utilizing at least one of those ways in you know your day-to-day -day activities so that way you're making additional gill. Up next is a method I've actually been doing quite recently and I highly recommend that you start doing it. You do want to be a little more of a veteran player and have at least some decent gear. This is going to be pretty hard for new and returning players to do, but going in and soloing Omen, and I do mean specifically soloing Omen and not having anyone else come in with you. So I've been soloing Omen as of late, and it has actually been great. I've been actually making sure I try and go every day, but I make sure I'm leaving an extra canteen, so that way if I see a shout for a boss fight, I can go ahead and still jump on that. But what I do is, is I go in and I make sure that I dump my merits, so that way I'm making progress on the pulse weapon that's just on the side, because I get almost 70 merit points just from going in and killing all the Sweetwater mobs and Omen. Uh, I get decent capacity points as I'm doing it. Uh, any of the crystals that drop I get, which are how I'm making a lot of the money from Omen. Since these crystals are used to augment ultimate weapons, these are highly sought after by, you know, endgame people. And unless you're making progress on yours, 
It's a really good way to make money. I honestly probably average getting six to seven of these crystals a run. And considering that they sell for a decent amount of money at this point in the range of 250k per crystal, I am actually making well more than a million per run and I'm getting cards, I'm getting merits, and I'm getting capacity points all while I'm just chilling by myself solo. And if I actually did omen with someone else, then any of the crystal drops are potentially split. This is why I recommend doing it solo because that way every single crystal drop is mine and you know no one else can take it. So that way you're making more money. If I go in with someone else, then the money drops essentially, which are the crystals, are going to be split. So if you're trying to make money, I highly recommend you know soloing Omen for cards, uh, you know XP, CP, and Gil. It's a fantastic way, and it's what I've been doing consistently every day, and it's making me a decent amount of money. Next up that I want to talk about for making Gil is Dynamis. The old school Dynamis, you can actually, you know, make money just farming up the currency. While on at least the server that I'm on, it might not be the best way as prices have dropped, it would still be, you know, consistent money for your time put in. I definitely would probably recommend doing some other things, but then again, I can see the price is actually being a decent bit and worth your time farming up if you are actually on a more dead or quiet server. Regardless what the different prices are, depending on the server, you know, farming up something that is pretty easy to farm up and you can get a lot of that is in somewhat of a demand. Relics are always going to be in demand. People are always going to be making relics. So that's always going to be a way to make money. So that's definitely, you know, a way to make money. Also, farming new Dynamis. However, it's not going to be as easy guaranteeing that you're getting drops because one, you're going to have to be doing it as a group. But you can actually make a decent amount of money farming the new type of Dynamis. That's kind of a whole different matter altogether, but since I was talking about Dynamis, I might as well mention that yes, you can make a decent amount of money farming the new Dynamis by either just selling the you know, metals, the tags, and any armor pieces uh, that you end up getting. They all sell for on the auction house and you can make you know a decent amount of money from doing that. However, obtaining that stuff is a little bit harder considering if you're not solo you're not getting all the drops yourself and that is an event that you have to be doing with multiple people next thing on my list for making gill would be farming some alexandrite doing some tier 2 salvages is a decent way to make some alexandrite and alexandrite is always in demand you can actually make a decent amount of money for a very little time investment going and doing salvage. I was actually doing this for a while when I wanted to make some money and it's just something I've stopped doing but it might be something I might ramp up and start doing again. It you can clear a salvage in 15 20 minutes if you are, you know, experienced and you have a even just decently geared character. It wouldn't be too hard to go through, and you always have a chance of one to two pouches, plus you can get you know anywhere from like 20 to 40 loose Alex. That comes out to about a stack, so for about 20 minutes of your time, at least on my server, you're going to be getting somewhere between you know 600 to a million gil per run in 20 minutes worth of your time. That is definitely well worth it in my opinion, and you should definitely be farming Alex if you want a good way for making money. Another great way to get Gil is to actually pay attention to what campaign events are going on. A lot of the campaigns offer a lot of good ways to make Gil. Like Void Watch is a great way to make Gil. It's pretty easy to get Heavy Metal Plates and Rift Cinder or Rift Dross from spamming out Void Watch. And when the event's going, you have cap lights, you're getting the maximum chance of drops from the campaign. Uh, Walk of Echoes is another one, since all of the uh, chambers are surged, you always have a chance of getting the HQ item as opposed to the NQ item, which is, of course is going to sell for more. 
A high tier battle campaign would be another one considering you get additional personal drops. So teaming up with a group, you're going to be guaranteed getting boxes of Betsu, Riftborn, Boulders, and Plutons. And you can turn around and sell that, and that's a decent bit of money right there. The Unity NM campaign is another one for a great example. A lot of times when that's going around, you're getting double accolades. And that just goes back to, you know, my whole discussion about, you know, how accolades can end up being decent money if you use it correctly. And then the fact if you go do Unity NMs and you're getting two coffers per run, that's just doubling all your drops. So, you know, again, campaigns are a great way to make money. So you got to be a lookout on when they're going and you know figure out which one's going to be best since they're constantly changing but definitely be on the lookout and use events as ways to make gil next thing that i wanted to talk about is the augmented items for ryzen jima armor this stuff that drops off of ascendant mobs it's pretty easy to farm and once you have them you can typically just go to norg put them up in your bazaar and you can make a decent amount of money now on azura i think there's so many people that are doing this there, there's so many coming in since it is the most dense server. The price on these aren't really worth it on this server. However, this was a main source of gil for me when I was still on Valifor, which was more of a dead server. So, I mean, you kind of need to check the prices and see, but farming these augmented items, it's pretty easy to do. You're going to get decent CP while you're doing it, so you can basically be XPing and getting CP for a job that you want while you know making sure that you're getting ascendant mobs so that way you're getting these augmented items that you can turn around and use yourself or sell for a decent amount of gill but before you want to use this as your main gill making method you know i check the prices first because there might be much better ways to make gill depending on what server you're on but it's definitely an option you should be aware of next thing on the list would be vigory this is a pretty decent way since they actually give you weekly records of eminence that get you drops. Plus, just getting the drops from the NMs if you happen to get them. A lot of these things sell for a couple hundred K each. So, it's definitely a good way. Even if you're, you know, going with a large group of 18 people and you don't win any drops, just getting your personal drops from records of eminence can be a decent way to make money. So, Vagary should definitely be on the list, and you should be trying to get in there every week, if at all possible, to make some extra dough. Which, the next thing on my list would be Delve. Delve can be a decent way to actually make some money. The bosses actually have items that are used for all kinds of different things. They're used in crafting, they're used to pop certain NMs, they are, you know, used to make the Ergon weapons... And there's even other uses that I'm not even going to get into, but Delve, clearing Delve from the bosses can actually get you a decent amount of, you know, crafting items that you can turn around and sell for a decent amount of gill. Plus, if you're spamming out Delve for money, you're going to be getting Plasm, which you can then turn around and just buy the items directly to turn around and sell and make more money. So Delve is definitely an option you should be looking into if it is something that you can handle. Also, if you're not doing this, I don't know where you've been, you should probably, you know, get a wake-up call here, but you should be doing Ammon Trove. Uh, every month, they're in Records of Eminence, at the bottom under content, you can go under there, and there you should be at least doing the top four records of eminence things because they are really easy, guaranteeing three silver slips if you just do the top four, and a Mars Orb, which you can then turn around and go use an Ammon Trove, and you have a chance to make gill. I actually got a 65 million uh, gill belt out of Ammon Trove and turned around and sell it and made a decent amount of money, you know, just for popping the orb. So, Ammon Trove is definitely a good way of making money. Uh, it is random. Obviously, you could go in there and completely lose it all. But if you're not doing Ammon Trove, you should definitely be doing it. Because, again, you, you have a chance to make decent money. It's just something that should be mentioned on this list. And the final thing that I want to mention on my list is just farming some basic items. I can't really tell you exactly because the market is always changing. In like two years, what I'm about to mention could possibly not be worth anything, and then other things that are worth nothing now could potentially be worth items. 
how updates are stuff changes all the time but just going and looking on the auction house and just figuring out a decent camp and a decent place to farm just basic items that are used in either crafts or something else can be a pretty easy way to make money one way is just farming crystals and and or clusters if you're not aware you can just farm crystals from doing whatever content where you're getting crystals and then turn around and go to a guild and there's a moogle there that you can actually turn around give them crystals and then you can pull the crystals right back out at no cost and if you're pulling them out in groups of 12 it'll be a cluster rather than crystals so you can literally convert your crystals into clusters and then selling stacks of clusters is a decent amount of money you can obviously also go kill elements that'll drop clusters directly and turn around and sell them like I said, stacks of clusters sell for a decent amount of money, so that's a very easy way to make gill. But then just farming whatever else, like Dalahand armor would be a perfect example of that. Just going and killing, you know, a bunch of Dalahands until you get a stack of Dalahand armor and then go ahead and sell that. That sells on my server anywhere from 50 to 100k a stack, and they're not too hard to farm up. Plus, they're higher level, so it's a decent way to get CP and make money at the same time. But again, stuff's always fluctuating, so I can't really be like, oh, go farm this. You kind of have to find your own niche thing for this and just find something to farm. But that should be mentioned, and just finding something to go and farm is definitely a good way to make money. So that about sums up my ways for making gill. There are a lot of different ways, and of course there are ways that I didn't even get into in this video, but these are some of the best ways that I think that you can actually spend your time where you're making gill and typically making progress in other areas at the same time. So if you're not already, I highly recommend incorporating some of these things into whatever you're doing to, you know, try and make some more money. Uh, for me, I'm trying to make sure I'm making gill every month from Ambuscade, and at this point I'm doing Omen almost every day, if not every day, getting those crystals for myself just so I can turn around and sell them. But again, it's good to have a variety of options so you're not getting bored and you can mix it up for making money. And that about covers everything that I have. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment on which one of these methods that I list that you think you're most likely to do to try and make gill or that you're already doing uh, to go ahead and make some gill. And if you got any value out of this video, please hit that like button. And as always, may you have success in all you do.